We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. It's Monday, baby. And today we have a first, our first ever guest from Chile. We got connected through the incredible ClickFunnels community, and we're extremely excited to discover more about her journey and how she's changing lives for the better. That is right. Today's guest has been in the online entrepreneurship world since 2008, and she's all about creating a positive impact in other people's life. So you better be ready because you're leaving up by the end of this conversation. I'm sorry, I messed up right there. <laughs> you are leveling up by the end of this conversation. She's also the host of Beyond the Hustle, in which she has interviewed entrepreneurs such as Russell Branson, Gary Vaynerchuk, Dean Graciosi, and many, many more. Mm. And just in case, let's share the fact that she loves traveling and plays the electric guitar. Does that mean that today we're getting a guitar solo on the show? What's Maybe. Oh, we'll see. Please welcome host of Beyond the Hustle, our first ever guest from Chile, and maybe the number one content is profit rock star, Carolina Millan. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> We're so excited to have you here. Oh, I'm very excited to be here. That was uh, that was really cool. Uh, I don't know about the guitar, but. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Usually, when when I find out that somebody, you know, a guest plays the guitar, I I try to throw them a little bit under the bus. Eventually, Ooh. who knows? Eventually, who knows? we might get a, a a concert in here one day. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Carolina, I think you have to throw the bus back at Fonzie because he's been trying to learn how to get the guitar for like five months now. So, you know, you should tell him, hey, should you uh, do the live show and uh, and make some that, impression? Yeah, that sounds like a good way to practice. That's you know, right. Yeah. Hey, Carolina, if you want to do a duet one of these days, <laughs> you know, I'm down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Carolina, we've, you know, before we, we got connected through this incredible community that is ClickFunnels, right? And, uh, you know, we've we've heard and we've seen that you've achieved wonderful, incredible things in that community. Can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, who Carolina is, like why you started this entrepreneurship journey and uh, what are you currently doing? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll try to make the long story short. <laughs> Um, but yeah, back in 2008, I was fresh out of university. I just graduated. I, I went to business school. So I studied business here in Chile, um, Ingeniería Comercial for the Latinos who might be listening. <laughs> and um, I went, got a job, you know, the, the usual thing they tell you to do. You graduate, you get a job. Hopefully one day you can become a CEO somewhere, right? So I went, got my first job, and while I was at my first job, which was in human resources in a, an international company here in Chile, mm -hmm. after a few months in my job, I realized I didn't want to be an employee for the next 40 years. Mm -hmm. So everything that they told me to do, uh, I, I was now thinking, I, I don't think I can do this. So I started doing some research and I went on Google and that's how I discovered that I could use social media. I could use the internet for something other than talking to friends and family. I discovered that I could actually leverage social media to build a personal brand. So I, I started to discover all of these like concepts that I did not learn at university, even though I went there and studied for five years. They never told me about digital marketing. Um, I had no idea about funnels. I had no idea about branding or any of that. I only mm -hmm. like at university, they teach us a very like corporate kind of marketing. Yeah. And it doesn't really work when you're an individual who wants to pursue entrepreneurship. So I had to teach yeah. myself everything from zero, <laughs> basically. Yeah. And 
Uh, and while I was doing this and thinking about what I wanted to do, I had this colleague at work who approached me and she told me about this uh, network marketing opportunity. And I had heard about network marketing before, MLM, some people call it as well. Yeah. And I figured, hey, maybe that's a good way to start, you know, to do something independently. And so I joined that company with her and this was towards the end of 2008. And then there was a big, 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 financial crisis around the same time that I joined the company. So nobody wanted to join anything. Nobody wanted to take risks. <laughs> so, oops. Yeah. Uh, and also, my, I didn't make a lot of money. My salary was about, <clears throat> I guess, if we convert, if we do a conversion, it was like $1,000 a month, oh. um, which for a, college, a university professional in Chile, uh, today it's probably not enough. But back then, it, it was just enough for me yeah. and so i took a big risk there but it was worth it because if, if if i hadn't done that i wouldn't have gone on google again to figure this out okay how am i going to do this business thing that i just invested a whole salary yeah. into yeah and i started following some gurus some experts <laughs> um i don't think well russell brunson i don't know what he was doing in 2008 but he wasn't famous yet <laughs> so i started following him a little later like in 2012 yeah. 11. Yeah. um but i found people like mike dillard who is also another mm. big uh, marketer mm. perry belcher who is a co-founder of digital marketer those were the first people wow. i started following uh ryan dice and I started learning and learning and just teaching myself everything I could about marketing. I, I joined Twitter. I joined, well, Facebook. I started creating content on YouTube a little while later. And then yeah. slowly but surely, uh, a couple of years later, I was able to quit my job. So in 2010, I was able to quit my job finally. And I started working as a freelance social media manager. Like I started helping some restaurants locally here in Chile with their Twitter strategies. Uh, Twitter was like the clubhouse of 2008. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or the, the green room. Or yeah. Like, uh, 2020. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I started doing that. And then slowly I, I started, you know, growing outside of Chile, building my reputation. Then I then I stopped working with just like, like local businesses and started doing affiliate marketing. Yeah. Um, and that's what brought me later, you know, closer to click funnels and all of that stuff. Like that's how I met Russell Brunson. He invited me to be an affiliate for, uh, click funnels and dot com yeah. secrets. So wh when I, when I joined that, when I started like getting more familiar and more involved in the scene was that I, I, I finally started to get the results that I was looking for. Yeah. Um, so 2012 was probably the year where I had like my biggest breakthrough at the time. Mm. And, and yeah, and since then I've been, you know, traveling a lot, except the last two years yeah. <laughs> for yeah. obvious reasons, <laughs> but, um, I love what I do. I, now I mostly do mentoring and courses and I, I teach people, you know, everything I know about funnels, traffic, um, personal branding and, and, you know, growing, yeah. Growing a, an online business based on on your passion. Also. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Can I th thank you so much for for sharing your journey. And uh, you know, as South Americans too, we identify big time in you know with you know what you went through. Obviously, we're 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 in, in the middle of that journey. You know, as you know, we we saw that you you took action in different things, different aspects. You saw this college education, right? And then you were like, man, like this is not really why, what I wanna do in, with my life. And uh, and then you you pivoted and, and, and you found this opportunity, right? And then you took action on that opportunity and continue to educate yourself. Now, I have a really interesting question because normally or usually in South America, right? In our countries, when college is viewed as like the big opportunity, right? The people, mm. families are like, Hey, you gotta, you gotta go there, go to school, study and go like that. For us it was a little different. Like our parents were, uh, a little bit out of the norm. They're like, whatever you do, we support you. Like, it doesn't matter if it's education or no education, like go do your thing Our for ours was soccer uh, or football. Right. And, and that's how we ended up here in the, in the United States. But mm. do you had a similar experience like that where you're like, man, like, what was it really challenging to make that decision from hey i'm an engineer right with this degree 
to now I'm facing this new entrepreneurship world, which by the way, at, at that time, it was not as famous, right? I'm, I'm doing air quotes here as, as what it is now, right? Like it was yeah. probably a very unknown thing. So what was that transition for you? Yeah, it was, it was not that easy. Well, my, my family was very supportive with me. Um, they didn't really understand what I was doing, but they trusted me. <laughs> yeah. um, they were more traditional, you know, like get a job, get a degree. So I'm, I don't really regret anything. I don't regret going to university and getting my degree and getting a job because all those experiences brought me to where I am today. And yeah. Yeah. And that's what made me realize I wanted to be an entrepreneur. If I hadn't experienced the other the other road, I wouldn't yeah. know I wanted this one. <laughs> so yeah. I'm very grateful for that. But yeah, in 2008, 2009, um, very few people in South America were talking about digital businesses or, yeah. you know, affiliate marketing or any of these things. So that's why at the beginning I started doing everything uh, in English. Um, yeah. Mostly, you know, I started creating content in English. I started uh, uh, joining Facebook groups, communities. I, when I started my um, my first funnels, mm -hmm. all of those things, I was doing them in English because nobody here was talking about it, and I didn't think people were were interested in that mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Um, so that that's that was the biggest challenge at the beginning, but then. It, I, I I always loved the language. I I always and I didn't have a problem with it, so it worked out for me. I started making lots of connections, meeting great people from yeah. the U.S., from Europe, from all over the world, and and then slowly I started realizing that in South America things were starting to wake up. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when I noticed that, like in 2016, 17. I started creating content in Spanish again, and and today um, I'm like 80% Spanish and only like 20% wow. English. Because it it I realized there was so much opportunity for me to come yeah. back to the Spanish speaking yeah. world, yeah. less competition in a way. I felt I felt like I could add even more value. A lot of people don't get the same exposure I get to the the big people in in the U.S. who speak mm -hmm. English because not everybody here speaks English. Yeah. So in a way, I I'm able to share what I learn from them, and that's why I do the interviews and stuff mm -hmm. with people who don't speak English. So it's been it's been a great experience for me from that sense. Yeah. But yeah. but yeah, luckily my 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 family they were very supportive and and I didn't have a big challenge from that aspect. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um but you answered one of the questions that I had. I was going to ask whether you started marketing first to the US or in Spanish, right? And yeah. I found it interesting now that the transition now you're doing about 80% of your content in Spanish. Um, you said about 2016 is when things over there in South America started to kick off. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what, it, what is your point of view now on, on this market in, in South America, right? I mean, it's been, you know, about five years since you started going, putting your attention mm -hmm. into the market. Is the market growing at a, you know, at a good pace for uh, entrepreneurs just like yourself? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the like the very very beginning, I did start in Spanish, and when I noticed that nothing was happening, was when I shifted because when I was learning, you know, every expert I was following was from North America mostly, yeah. or Europe, or you know, everything was all the information I was consuming and learning, and the books and everything, videos was in English. So mm -hmm. suddenly, I I figured maybe I should just do this in English. Yep. Because in Spanish, I was not getting that much traction. I was only getting like a few clients here locally. And I didn't want to work with local clients where, you know, I had to go to a meeting and I wanted to do everything online, like 100 percent. Yes. If I, and if I was working with restaurants or that kind of local business, they wanted to meet me once a week. They wanted, you know, and I didn't want that. So yeah, you wanted to travel, see the world. Yeah, too, right? I wanted to travel. I didn't want to feel like I was an employee of my clients now. So, yeah. so that's what made me do that transition. Now, what happened was in 2016, 17, um, 
I was I was getting people who were following me who were from South America, but who also spoke English. Mm -hmm. So they followed my content and they understood what I was saying, but they would leave comments in Spanish. And, and sometimes people would tell me, hey, you should do this in Spanish. So yeah, yeah. but it was very slow. Like it was only last year in 2020 where I really went from 50 50 to like 80 20. Oh, wow. um, because like my my Instagram was in English, you know, my YouTube channel, I only had it in English and, you know, and all of that. Yeah. And, and then I started noticing that there were other like people, other entrepreneurs in South America who were doing like really big things and being very, very successful. And I thought to myself, wow, if they're doing, wow, they're doing so great just in Spanish, then maybe if I could do some of that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need the huge results these people are having, but um, maybe there's potential. And so Absolutely. 2018, 19, 20 uh, was when I really like shifted totally. And today when people ask me, because I get a lot of people asking me who are bilingual, who have the same thing where, hey, I'm doing this in English, but I'm Latina and... I see that you are doing it in Spanish, but you were also doing it in English. What should I do? What's your advice? Yeah. Should I do both? And then I tell them, look, if you do both at one point, you're gonna, because it's really hard to do both. Like I still yeah. do both, but it's really hard because you record a video and then you have to record it in another language. Yeah. You record a podcast. Like I don't have a podcast in Spanish yet, but yeah. I want to. So when I do that, it's gonna be two podcasts, two YouTube channels, two, you know, so yeah. I tell them it's really hard to do both equally. Yeah. You gotta yeah. have to prioritize one, and I suggest you prioritize Spanish because there's a lot of hunger over here. People are really hungry to learn, to grow. Um, I'm not saying they're not hungry in other countries, but there's a lot more supply, like the supply and demand yeah. down here. There's less supply, so there's more. Oh, yeah. There's more demand. So yeah. there's more opportunity. That's my opinion, at least. I love it. I, I love that point of view. Sorry, real quick. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that you address the question of which one should I do, right? Like, should I do Spanish? Should I do English? And, you know, we often, we have this principle that we base a lot of our work off, which is called the publishing pyramid, right? And a specific part of it is understanding your capacity. And that took us... Uh, mm -hmm. a lots of, I don't know, I, I'm just going to call them, you know, falls and trips uh, to discover because we were trying to do a lot of things, right? We were not trying to do it in Spanish, but we were literally trying to replicate the publishing strategy of Gary Vaynerchuk, right? And he has a huge team on his back. And it was exactly. just the two of us. And we're like, oh, let's, let's, you know, produce content like he does. Guess what? Soon enough, you'll discover you don't have the capacity mm -hmm. to do that. And that's going to lead you to, you know, burnout or just honestly, sometimes just feeling bad because you think you're not capable of doing such things when the circumstances are totally different. So for us, we discover we're kind of like, OK, what is our capacity? What can we focus on? Put our focus. So I love the fact that you bring that to the table because exactly. when you are starting out, it is so easily to be swayed away by all the other things that you see in the marketplace that are happening, right? Oh, I want to, you know, create content like Carolina and like Gary Vaynerchuk, like the Biz Bros, right? And guess what? If it's only <laughs> you to start with, there's other things probably that you need to take care of as well. If you have clients, there's client work that you're going to have to do. So guess what? That's taking part of your capacity as well from yeah. creating content. So it's we got to be honest with ourselves at the beginning, right? It's, okay, what can I do? on a consistent basis and there's an opportunity cost to all that stuff, right? I mean, we're going to have to say no to certain things and that no might be to doing content in English, but whatever we pick, we need to understand that we're going to only see results if we stay consistent doing those things for the long term. We cannot expect to do something in one week and then it's like, oh, massive results. Like, You've yeah. been doing this since 2008. Something that I, that caught my my mind was it took you four years for what you called your breakthrough in 2012. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. That's amazing. It's a long time. It's a <laughs> long time, right? Like 
I mean, there's a stat. It says like 90% of businesses here in the States uh, fell within the first five years. So mm. the fact that you had to wait, and I'm just saying wait, but you were working hard for four years until that breakthrough happened, right? It's incredible because a lot of people in those four years is easy to say, oh, let me go try something else. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, props to you. And thank you for bringing that about capacity. Because I think yeah. mm. if we would have known that when we started, just so you get an idea, we started selling stickers, then <laughs> okay. we made t-shirts, then we transitioned to like eBooks and then social media marketing. So, so everything that I'm telling you, like <laughs> not to do, we did, right? <laughs> we were those people that just like try to do, try to well, do everything. I, I tried to do many things too. Like I tried to do MLM, you know, it didn't work. Like after a year, year and a half, I quit that. And then I went into affiliate marketing. Then I went into social media marketing and okay. um, co uh, coaching and, and consulting. So I did try a lot of things, but I was always like, the one thing that was consistent for me was my personal brand. Like I was, mm. I, like I had my blog, I had my, my YouTube channel, like I was, I was aware that I needed to build that. And then building a personal brand, I could do different things from my brand, you know, kind of like what Gary V is doing. Right? He's a big yeah. role model for me, but he has a 30 people team, you know, <laughs> just, just for Gary V brand, just for that yeah. brand of him. Yeah. So I have two people, three people working for me right now, four people working for me right now. Um, but, I, you know, I tried to do the daily vlogging like he was doing and it was like, no, it's impossible. You know? <laughs> it, I it, don't have like a million things a day that I'm doing that it's worth documenting every single day. So, you know, you at one point you're going to try a lot of things and you're going to yeah. try to copy the big people but you shouldn't because you are not where they are and that's not where they started either they didn't start with mm. a huge team and yes. huge production uh they probably started like we started <laughs> you know and, yeah. and and gary v he'll tell you like he started selling or exchanging baseball cards with his friends or you know yeah. so that's you know you have to be aware of where you're at and not compare to other people and just, you know, get ideas, get inspiration, but don't try yeah. to do what those people are doing. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I agree. And you mentioned personal brand. That is the one thing that you've been consistent with. And again, to go back to Gary, he says that your personal brand is your reputation. Yeah. And, and once you have built that and you have a positive reputation, I feel like pivoting into doing different things becomes easier because now people look at you and they say this person you know they have the yeah. brand they're hard workers they can make things happen it's fine like you know if you pivot from let's say the stickers to social media marketing they're like they're gonna make it happen like look at their brand and then you you build that trust which yeah. is super important obviously in this world i, I think is a perfect connection with you know what we found on your site right like doing what you love right mm -hmm. like with with yeah. that personal brand becomes that anchor, right? Like, and we, I feel like we've discovered that over the past year with the podcast, right? Before the show, uh, we really struggle in many ways. One with publishing, right? Like we, the reason how we got unstuck on publishing was through a Facebook live challenge that we did internally, right? We were so stuck. We were producing for other people, for other local businesses, very similar to your story, right? We even started with restaurants, which is, you know, yeah. fun, mm -hmm. fun fact, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, oh gosh, I, what does I, that say about restaurants? I feel like <laughs> restaurants might be like the number one target for people that are getting but, into but, but, social media. Potentially, yeah. So, uh, and then, you know, we got this conversation with a few owners and like, where is your stuff, right? And we're like, man, like that's that's a good like gut punch. And, uh, and it was challenging because there was zero to almost like nothing online about mm -hmm. us, right? And we're like, man, like we need to start developing this thing. We got to publish. We got to listen to Russell or Steve, who was our coach. And we're like, okay, what can we do, right? But the, again, going back to capacity, I'm going back to what you were saying. What was your capacity then? It was just literally a daily Facebook Live. That's exactly the one thing that we could do because we couldn't model what was yeah. up. We could model a framework 
or we could not model the output, right? That, that, was a, that was a difference. And then from that, we got traction, we got resources, we landed a massive client, then we got opportunity and we're like, sweet, let's use that as leverage. Let's reinvest in that resources and start building that. And then right after that, we decided to launch the show at the beginning of 2020, right? And that's what changed everything because now, you know, going back to what you said, we are doing what we love, which mm -hmm. is, you know, creating these incredible connections, conversations, at the same time, developing a personal brand like you, that you talk about. And mm -hmm. then to get to know us as the biz bros, as a continent's prophet, as a crazy show with a crazy intro, right? And then guess what? That generates other opportunities later on for either strategic partnerships, more conversations, how can we help each other, and so on, and so on, and so on. But at the same time, the brand continues to grow, oh, and we course. continue to grow personally. So I, I would love to transition a little bit on the personal brand side of things. You kind of gave us a little bit of an introduction there of why you're so passionate about personal branding, right? It, it helped you in your journey. What elements should entrepreneurs be looking at when it comes to personal branding and get that momentum going? Yeah, but like, you know, like I said, I feel like the one thing you should be the most consistent with is your personal brand because your personal brand is nothing other than you. <laughs> it's uh it's your identity, it's it's uh, who you are. And back then, you know, when I started and people were talking about personal branding, it was not like it is today. Back then it was more about almost creating a, a persona, creating a character, you know, mm -hmm. um, hey, you should dress up and stuff. Um, and that didn't really resonate with me. And then I started following other people who were more authentic, who were more about, yeah. hey, your personal brand is who you are, whether you are in the room or not in the room, you know, what are people saying about you when you're there and when you're not there? And is it the same thing? Or are they talking behind your back when you left? Because, well, they didn't believe you, you know. So yeah. I think the 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 main thing about about building your personal brand is just being yourself with your virtues, your flaws, and not being, you know, not being afraid of uh, what other people are going to say. And just do, you know, Gary V says it: do you, you know, you do you. <laughs> yeah. and don't try to copy other people. I think what, what's important when building a personal brand is, is modeling other people. You know, somebody is doing something and it's working. How can I model that? How can I uh, take some inspiration from what that person is doing? Oh, look, they have this interesting intro before their video starts. Maybe I can have an intro, but I'm going to have my own intro. I'm not going to copy their yeah. intro. Yeah. You know, the same thing uh, for a podcast or any other type of content, you can look at what other people are doing with their content, what makes it special, why are people connecting with it, and yeah. just get ideas, get inspiration, and figure out a way to do it so that it's your own and you're not pretending to be someone else because people can can notice, people can smell it when somebody's being inauthentic, when somebody's yeah. mm. you know, not being themselves. And especially now with, with all this audio, uh, <laughs> platforms like clubhouse and green room where you you're there live you're you're right there live it's not pre-recorded you cannot schedule a file and upload it later or edit people are there listening to you right now so yeah yeah so okay. that means you you have to be as as real as possible and people appreciate that and and at the same time you know stay true to yourself and also you can evolve your personal brand can evolve with you. You can grow. You can. You don't have to, uh, like I said before. You know, you can be consistent with that. But then, if you want to try different things, you can try different things. If you got tired of, um, you know, maybe you guys one day figure out, hey, maybe we don't want to do content is profit anymore. Want to do another another podcast or another project, yeah. or change the direction. And you can do it if you build a personal brand where people got used to your authenticity and yeah. where people follow you for you and not just uh, not just your business or, or just, you know, what, what you do. And some people are going to be left behind and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, like for me, when I made the decision to, to shift my content to Spanish, I lost a lot of 
well, most of probably my yeah. English audience. And yeah. it was not a lot of people, honestly. I, I've never had like hundreds of thousands or millions of, of people listening to me or watching me. Mm -hmm. um, but well, I couldn't serve those people anymore the way I was serving them before. Yeah. And like my Instagram account, I knew that if I stopped speaking English in there, I would, you know, I would get a lot of my followers disengaged because they don't speak Spanish. Yeah. So I was like, well, that's that's okay, you know, because they will leave and that's fine. I will get new people in who who do speak Spanish. Um yeah. and, and that's it, you know. So just be true to yourself. Um, don't do anything just to fit in. Don't yeah. do anything just because everybody's doing it. So because everybody's doing it, I need to do this. No, you know, find the things that resonate with you, and that way you you'll be you'll be happier and more fulfilled. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, obviously, we love the topic of authenticity, and I do feel like it's a a pretty hot topic right now in the entrepreneurial world. Right, a lot of people are talking about you know you gotta be authentic, be yourself. But let's be honest, I, I feel like that comes with its challenges, right? There's a lot of mental blocks that people have that, you know, we all have. Yeah. That sometimes when you put a camera in front of us, it becomes challenging to be 100% yourself, right? And the first example that, that we give is ourselves. We actually attempted to try a, to start a podcast about I think two and a half years ago at this point. And we had so much friction to do it because we wanted it to be perfect, right? Yeah. At mm -hmm. the same time, we kind of we were trying to be ourselves, but by being such a perfectionist, we were actually doing the total opposite. Right. Like if we would make a mistake, we would stop mm -hmm. the recording and say, let's start again. Right. We gotta do it yeah. again because it's not good enough. Guess what? Authenticity is about embracing those mistakes right like further on when we started doing the 45 live challenge we started making mistakes live and guess what what is ask yourself what is the worst it can happen honestly like the worst it, the very worst is probably mm -hmm. somebody like a troll will come and say something mean to you that's and it <laughs> yeah that's it right and at that point you're like well Thank you for raising your hand and pointing me out where the troll is. Goodbye, right? Like you can block him. You can take him out of your world. Exactly. And honestly, it's very odd for that to happen. Like this is episode 183 and we haven't had a single troll yet. Troll, where are you guys? <laughs> you know, like, where are you guys? <laughs> um, but it's, it, it's a challenge though, right? Because we have all this mental blocks again like oh what is other people thinking about me all, all this all this of course stuff. that's normal the so how do you deal with that how do you manage to move past those or how do you because maybe you still have some of those right but you train yourself to act regardless well yeah i mean at the at the beginning i think most most people and including myself we are very self-conscious and we are very concerned about what other people are going to say, whether it's your family or friends or strangers on, on the internet. And, and yes, I've had people, uh, well, not that many, but yes, of course, I've had people send me negative comments or negative emails or, and it's funny, sometimes people, they sign up for your email list and then, <laughs> and then they email you like, never email me again. And I'm like, but, you signed up. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't sign you up. You did it. You know. So yeah. I used to reply to those people like in the past, because uh, it made me feel bad, you know. But now it's like let's just delete them and maybe block them so they cannot subscribe again to the list. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then on 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 Facebook and Instagram is where I get sometimes. Um, not so many uh, hate comments, but I do get some like men. Uh, leaving me inappropriate comments mm. you know, like marry me and stuff like that and for me that, uh, that's gross yeah. so just yeah. block you know yeah. just block those people like there's no time you don't have enough time to be wasting it like we don't yeah. know how much time we have really so wasting it with people who are not worth your time it's you know just 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 block them there, there's a block button on every social <laughs> platform yeah. um you know, I've had people 
uh, leave you know negative things and 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 I I do I I don't feel great about reading them though yeah um, but now I just go straight to to blocking and if somebody leaves you uh, something constructive then maybe it's worth engaging in a conversation with those people but it's very rare mostly it's just you know just realize that those people must be going through a really tough time in their lives if they're dedicating their energy to bringing somebody else down yeah so i i feel for a moment i feel bad and then i i i come out of myself you know just focusing on yourself and then i think that's sad you know that a person goes out there about their day uh sending hate to strangers <laughs> so really? when you look at it that way you should feel better about yourself because you are not wasting your time like that person is absolutely and you know just block them and feel sorry for them and then just you know just let it go uh and then a lot of other things like oh how's my hair or you know um my i i, I have this this how do you say this in english um uh, when you repeat a word a bunch of times, um, stuttering, I, stuttering, maybe? No, that no, that that's when you, no, it's not stuttering. <laughs> it's it's when, for example, it, Americans they say like a lot, like. Oh like, yeah, like, uh, like, like in Spanish, muletilla. In Spanish, <laughs> muletilla. Yeah, in Spanish it's muletilla, right? Yeah, and now so, I can't remember the word either. <laughs> I don't know the English word for it. Oh, that's, that, that, that's what happens it's, when three Hispanics meet in an English <laughs> podcast, right? We forget words. Oops. It's okay, but it's when we repeat. But you know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying, right? So yes, sometimes absolutely. there's a word that you repeat a lot and yep. you don't, you're not aware. And then people bring it up to you. Hey, I like your video. I had somebody do that to me. Hey, your video is really great, but you kept saying this word over and over again. And it, that like really bothered me. <laughs> but then I realized that there was like one person who said that out of thousands of other people who don't care. The yeah. reality is if your message is powerful, if you if you are authentic, if you're speaking from the heart, if you're adding value, yeah. most people are going to focus on that message, on what you're teaching or sharing, and not so much on what's going on with your hair or what you're wearing, unless, you know, it's very strange, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, or the words you say, or the way your mouth moves when you speak, or the, or the way your voice sounds, like we get very self-conscious about these little things. Um, and then at the end of the day, the truth is, you're probably the only person that cares about those things. <laughs> so I, yeah. I love it, Carol. Thank you so much for sharing all that because, yeah. you know, those are, those are big, hurdles when people are starting to to publish and put their message out there right it takes a lot of courage to actually go out and and you know literally put our thoughts into yeah. words and and expressing it to the world so i appreciate you because that's the exact same process that happened through our heads when we started publishing with 45 live right and and i'm moving along and with the show and you know there's now in the past i don't think we would have been showing like all the toys and all the things that are here <laughs> i you know, think they're cool Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's part of the personality, right? We had a we had a <laughs> Green Ranger helmet somewhere in there. And you know, each one of these has a, a cool story that you know we we share with people and people resonate, right? And we've yeah. had the, the most incredible connections with also business or we never know, right? Like what's happening in their heads as well, and the connections mm -hmm. that we, we talk a lot about relationships. And I remember this conversation with Eric Cabral, for example, his He's in the real estate world and he he has this incredible platform called uh, PodMax and they bring content creators together and they do it every couple of months. And we're having a discovery call and in the back, I have this little Spider-Man figurine, right? And I didn't know that he really enjoyed it, right? And he's been around, he's in mass in a bunch of masterminds and, and he's like, man, you love Spider-Man? I'm like, yeah, I really like him. You know, I like the movies. Like, what? I'm a big fan. And like connection was made, right? So the fact that we're being ourselves is going to help us. And guess what right like if they don't resonate that's okay there's still mutual respect yeah but if they if they did respect that from you then what will what will happen to the relationship if it evolves into a person into a professional relationship right we could potentially expect them to be disrespectful as well so i, I think that of being yourself building your personal brand I'm moving forward with, uh, you know, the thoughts that, you know, we put into words is incredible. So, yeah. I mean, just, just being yourself is going to attract yeah. the people that you want to hang out with. And it's going it. to be that way more exciting to do what you're doing, right? To build a business with your passion 
because if, again, the people that you're going to be bringing in, they're all going to have very similar passions. Yeah. And, yeah, and the others will just filter themselves out, and that's fine. You you, yeah. you cannot please everybody, and you should not try to please everybody because then your content is going to be very neutral and boring. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, be before we go into the last two questions here, I want to make a little remark. You were talking about placing the attention, right? Like, there's only one person that maybe says something negative and so often we just go and place our attention there, yeah. right? So I want to bring this to perspective to, you know, the listener on the cost of your attention. What is that cost of placing your attention in certain places? If you put your attention into mentorship, right? Into modeling successful entrepreneurs, just like Carolina, Gary Vaynerchuk, all these people that we've talked about today, you are going to grow, right? The cost of your attention is going to be a positive one. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, every time we receive a negative comment or something negative, if we place our attention in that, what is the cost? We're missing on all the other positive things. And now we are actually probably, you know, putting in our mind some negative thing that is going to cost us time, first of all, to move beyond that so then we can execute on the things that we need to execute right? right so is it worth it absolutely not right so let's just leave it out there say thank you no thank you <laughs> block them and then focus on the people that you're actually helping and you're creating an impact right and just before we move into that so people can can feel it from you Catalina so they can hear from you because I know mm -hmm. you're very passionate when people reach out to you and they tell you how much it means to them that you're helping them, right? Can you share a little bit about how does that feel inside? Like, how does that feel to help others and to receive these positive comments? So maybe, right, we're more willing to place our attention there. Yeah, yeah. The, what you said is very important because um, attention is the currency today. And we're, Tony Robbins says, where focus goes, energy flows. So if you focus on bad stuff, uh, negativity, then your energy is going there and it's a waste of energy. So you must yeah. not dwell in that and just acknowledge it and then move on as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when 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 you feel that you're helping other people it, and, and it can be in any niche, in any industry, not just in marketing or business, but in anything that you do in your life, even yeah. if it's just sharing your passion, even if you're streaming video games on Twitch and people tell you that they enjoyed it and, and they had fun watching you and they loved it, um, that's value. You're adding some value to that person. You help that person have a better day maybe. Maybe they were having a bad day, they watched your video and now they feel better. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's if somebody leaves a, a comment on my videos, especially on YouTube, um, that's where I like, that's the content that I produce where I, I worry the most that it's a good quality and <clears throat> that I plan the most and we, you know, we edit the videos so that they're good and stuff. So when somebody leaves a comment and they say that, hey, this video is really good, like, thank you. For me, that, that feels really good because it means the energy I put into that video went to yeah. good use, you know? It was worth it, even if it's one comment. A lot of people are concerned about views and likes and and focus more on the comments than the views and the likes and the tweets and retweets and all that stuff. <laughs> Look at the, the the people that are leaving a comment. Those people took the time, you know, they didn't just double tap, you know, blindly like on Instagram, you just double tap and you keep scrolling and, and you don't even yeah. know, you don't even read the caption. Automatic now, yeah. <laughs> you don't even read what the caption says. You just yeah. double tap and you keep going, right? But the person who read the caption who took the time to actually write something, like focus on those people and read their comments, reply yeah. to their comments. Even if you get one, two comments on a post uh, or a video, if it's one comment for me, it's like, okay, that was worth it. If one person got value today, if one person comes back to me and says they got a result from one of my videos, even if they're not a client, if it's a client, then, oh, even better. Cause you know, they also paid me money. <laughs> but if even if it's people who've never been my clients, it's um, for me. It's also like it's payment, you know. And they come back and they say this was useful yeah. because now I know I'm on the right track. Now yeah. I know, hey, 
okay, people seem to like this video, I'll make more like this one. Yeah. And that's also going to help me get more clients eventually. Yeah. And leave, you know, a positive mark, positive leg a legacy. And I think that's what everybody should be worrying about today. Yeah. You know, what legacy are, are you leaving? And not so much about mark, um, sorry, vanity metrics, yeah. uh, numbers and statistics. And those things matter to a point. But that should not be your only focus because then you're going to end up creating a content or creating things that are just for those numbers Absolutely. and you're not going to enjoy it. Ah, that's so good. Wow. What Thank legacy you. are you leaving, you know, behind? I, I think that's, mm. that's incredible. And, you know, we live in a world that technology has made it so easy for us to put stuff out there. Right. And uh, I can't remember exactly who made this comment, but it's like, I just, I literally, when I create content, I, I go and I think about my son. And uh, I think about him watching these videos and, mm -hmm. you know, once I'm dead, right? Once I'm, I pass away, what is he actually going to think? Is he actually going to be proud of what I created, what I put out there? That's yeah. such a powerful phrase, comment and, and thought process. So, you know, we encourage everybody to, to go through that, right? Like yeah. that changed everything yeah. for us, right? We feel incredibly proud of, of these incredible conversations that we're having. This is the reason why we do them, right? Because, you know, for Luca, for example, my son, I hope when he looks back at this, like he can learn, he can take action, he enjoys it and so on. So, Carol, mm -hmm. this has been incredible. We have two last questions for you as yeah, we Yeah, go up. ahead. So the second to last question is, what is that action point, that one thing that entrepreneurs, like if they're in that in that moment where they want to transition from their job to their, to their you know, passion and they want to, they want to tackle it as a career, like later on, right? What is the one thing that, that they can do today to make that change and create that momentum? Well, you know, when, when I was at my job and I wanted to quit my job and transition to be independent, <clears throat> I, what the first thing I did was figure out what can I do so I can, you know, replace my salary. Like that was my first goal. So I think the first thing you need to do is just set goals that are, you know, immediate goals, not not just focus on the long term, like the big dream, like have that big dream yeah. out there in your vision board or whatever, what you, what's the big dream. But on a daily basis, what little things can you do to achieve the first thing in front of you? Like your goal should be the first thing in front of you. Yeah. yeah. And for me, the first thing in front of me was, okay, I need more freedom. So that means I need to quit my job. So that means I need to replace my salary. Like that was my goal at the first, at the beginning, not just, I want to travel the world and work on my laptop. Like, yes, I wanted that too, yeah. but I was not going to achieve that in a month or two yeah. or even a year. <laughs> so the first thing was what little things can I do that will make me some money so that eventually I can replace my job. I love it. So <clears throat> that's, that should be your first goal. If you, if you currently have a job and you want to do that transition. Yeah. Um, so figure out what you need to do to, to get that first thing. Then for me was, okay, now I can quit my job. Now I would like to make a little more money than my job because that's not enough to do the other things I want to do. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. enough to travel. So at first you will have goals that are for you and that's okay. You know, that's okay to be a little selfish at the beginning because you need to take care of your needs first before you can go and change the world. Yeah. Like you're not going to change the world if you haven't taken care of yourself or <laughs> yeah. even the people next to you, your family. Yeah. So for me at the beginning, it was that it was, okay, how can I take care of myself? Then how can I take care of my family? And back, you know, I told you 2012 was like when I had my, my big breakthrough yeah. and partly was because I wanted to help my mom. My mom that year, she got diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. and that kind of pushed me to, okay, I need to make this work because cancer is expensive. I want to help my mother. Um, so that also pushed me harder to get the results that I needed to get. And so sometimes you need something external to yourself. Yeah. Um, and that's going to push you even further. That's the truth. And then once you take care of the people around you, then it's more about, you know, impacting strangers, you know, impacting, how can I um, expand this wave of, of impact? How can I help random yeah. people um, that I don't know? 
But yeah. you have to start with with you. You're not going to become a super viral star overnight. And even yeah. the people that do, it probably wasn't overnight. It looks overnight, but maybe it wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So it's being consistent, having clarity. What do you want? Where do you want to go? And mostly, where are you right now? Because if you only focus on where you want to be, but you don't know where you are now, you know, you, you can have the best GPS, but if you don't know the starting point, you're yeah, not going to make it to the destination. Absolutely. So be self-aware, you know, be aware of what are the things you're good at, where are the things where you need help, where are the things where you could maybe uh, invest in yourself, maybe yeah. learn a skill. What new skill could I learn today that's going to push me further to where I want to go? And all those things, okay. I think, are what helped me personally. Yes. Uh, and still today, you know, still today, I'm aware of some of the skills where I need improvement and trying to figure out how can I get better at those things. And and then the things that are, that just, you know, that are just not for you, for s some people struggle with the technical stuff. Uh, yeah. Delegate, you know, find somebody who's good with the tech stuff. And maybe delegate those things and you Absolutely. focus on learning skills that go more with you know who you are absolutely carol thank you so much i i relate so much and when you were telling the story i was going back and you know we tend to be dreamers as entrepreneurs right like if we want to start something we're like oh that's the dream right and yeah. I, I, this is a conversation that we've had lately we're like okay what is the nitty-gritty right like what is the thing what are the elements let's be very very specific literally yeah. black and white it was done or not done but i remember when we first started it was that it was like the dream and the vision was so blinding that we didn't really see where we were standing first exactly. and then we're like what is the thing that we need to do so thank you so much for that incredible yeah. advice i appreciate it like complete mastermind today on, on everything last question to wrap up the show Kato, where will you be if you did not publish you know if you didn't put content out there I honestly, I don't know, because <laughs> the funny the funny thing was when I was younger and even when I started all of this, all those years ago, and I was in, in my early 20s, I was a very shy person, um, so really, like really shy. Like I didn't mm -hmm. like photos, I didn't like videos, I hated mm -hmm. my voice. Um, so... <laughs> I, I don't know because it, it took me it took me a while to get over that get over yeah. being on camera um, get over the what what are people gonna say because I was super shy and so very self conscious yeah. um, public speaking for me was a big breakthrough because I was yeah. very afraid of it um, so if I if I wasn't making content I don't I honestly don't know what I would be doing it would have to be something you know, like a trader. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I don't even like trading or, you know, the yeah, stock market yeah. and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, th thanks for sharing, right? Because that's so important. But you mm -hmm. described, you know, introvert. There's a lot of introverts. That Russell is a big introvert. Like he says it all the that's time. That's how I was. I, yeah. I still am kind of introverted. <laughs> yeah, I've would, never would been outgoing. <laughs> yeah. You did great today, by the way. We, we, I don't think we would have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, you. But it, it's so it's so rewarding because you know we gotta put our stuff out there. You know, like Gary says today, we need that modern media team, modern media company, right next to what we do. And I love how how with you you tackled those together because it's your passion, it's what you love, right? And you develop that personal branding, and then you can adapt, right? But the content is still there, the message is still there, your people are still there, and you know all those elements that we talked about today were so powerful. So, Carla, just want to say thank you so much for coming to thank the you guys. show. It was so fun learning yeah. and, and having a conversation from you. Where where can people go to find more about you, what you do, what you offer, connect with you? Where where can people go? Yeah, certainly. Um, well, you can you can definitely subscribe to my podcast, which is in English <laughs> still, uh, Beyond the Hustle. Uh, you'll find it on all the major platforms, or you can go to beyondthehustle.com. Also, my, my website, uh, I do have two websites. I do have one in English and one in Spanish, but the, the English one is still, it's, we're still like renovating it, so it's a little outdated. Um, but if you go to carolinamillan.net, 
that is my English website and .com is my Spanish. But we're probably gonna just merge everything into the .com website and just put yeah. a little button where you can switch <laughs> the language. Yeah. Um, Instagram, I spend a lot of time there, mostly in Spanish too now, but you can still connect with me on the DMs, the direct messages, if you wanna reach out to me or ask me anything. Um, you can just go, it's my name as well, at Carolina Millan. Um, and well, I'm also on Facebook, or YouTube. You'll find my YouTube channel in English as well. I think I gave you guys the links if you, yes. you have them. Yeah. 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 So yeah we're actually going to put them in the description and everywhere. All you got to do is scroll down yeah. and click in there. And we're going to put all the, all we're the, we're going to put both Spanish, Spanish English. and English. So awesome. if you, yeah. If you speak <laughs> English and want to learn Spanish too, you know, go to yeah. website. You can learn Spanish yeah. watching yeah. my videos. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. thank you again. A anything else you want to add before we head out? Oh, just just thank you guys. It was great, uh, great questions. I felt very welcome, very comfortable. So, wishing you amazing success with what you're doing. Um, you have something very cool going on. And to all the people listening uh, or watching, I hope you got value today and go out there, do something, even if it's you know take a small step towards where you want to go. Figure out what are your skills, figure out what you're good at, what you really want to do. And don't just go and dabble and try a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, go all in with, with your dream. And, you know, it, it, the, the, pay, the payout will come. Like at some point you will, um, you will get, get the, the results that you want. Just be patient. I think yeah. patience is, underrated <laughs> absolutely. Uh, big time absolutely thank Ka you so much yeah, thank you again and uh with that said guys thank you for tuning to the continuous profit podcast go ahead and follow the show and our social media at base bros go that is right and if carolina blew your mind <laughs> and inspire you beyond measure and you're ready to take action please don't forget to share this episode and leave a five-star review see ya bye guys <laughs>